Hey everybody, it's Rain. Today we're going to be using a glazing technique on some grade A mulberry silk combed top and I'm also going to give you a little life update on where I've been and what's been going on. So make sure you stay tuned till the very end so you don't miss anything and you see the results. So this is two ounces of mulberry silk comb top. I know that's not much, but I wanted to try this technique and see what happens and then we can scale up from there. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is soak this in some plain tap water. Silk can be quite hydrophobic. It likes to really keep itself floating on top of the water. So you do have to take a little bit of time to press it down and try to get it as saturated as possible before we add our dye. So it took me a good few minutes of squeezing and pressing to get most of that air out and to get it saturated at least partially and that's all you want with plain tap water you don't have to let it soak or anything since there's no acid in this just water so once it starts looking like that it is time to add our dye the first dye I'm using is Jacquard turquoise and this is a 1% stock solution you can find out how I mix my stock solutions in the eye up there I will link the video in the top right corner of your screen so normally I use measuring cups to measure how much dye I'm going to use, but today I just wanted to go for it. So I just used six of your regular standard tablespoons of Jacquard Turquoise 1% stock solution. And that may seem like a lot, but trust me, mulberry silk needs a lot of dye when it comes to getting a good saturated color the way that I'm wanting. And I do want to mention, this is very important, my mulberry silk top is braided. So that is going to have a huge impact on the final result. So make sure if you want full penetration, don't braid it like this. Because braiding it like this is going to give you a variegated look instead of a semi-solid or solid color. So be sure to just keep that in mind. So I let this sit. This is just the silk, the dye, and water. No acid or anything like that. No heat. And I let that sit overnight. So here's what it looks like the next morning. As you can see, a lot of that dye got absorbed. And silk is really good about that. It can absorb quite a bit of dye without acid. One thing I've learned about silk is to get a nice, even, color like this you want to let it soak without acid for a little while let it get nice and saturated and then add your acid after to set that color in you don't necessarily have to leave it overnight but it will help get it more of a solid color all right I've got the heat off and I've got my pot right here and I'm going to take the silk and transfer it over to my pot and we're going to add our dye water we're gonna see if we can't get this to completely clear so I'm going to lay it out kind of like a snake coiled up on the bottom so that it's nice and even. And we are going to add some citric acid to this. I probably added around a half a tablespoon, closer to a tablespoon. So we're just going to start out nice and slow, then give it a little mix. We're going to let that sit with that acid in there for another little bit. I'm going to turn my heat down to lower end of medium and just let that sit for a few minutes see what we get after that all right it's been about 15 minutes give or take see if this is cleared up any or if we need to add a little more acid silk is very notorious for needing a lot of acid so I don't doubt that we're gonna to have to add more yeah I'm gonna go ahead and cut the heat off and just douse this with quite a bit of citric acid and that will help us in our next step the glazing process nice and gently just kind of move it around to get that all that acid underwater so I was getting a little low on my citric acid so I went ahead and added a little bit of vinegar to this as well and I gave that a little stir to get all that vinegar mixed in another 15 20 minutes and see where we're at so after about 15 or 20 minutes you can see our dye bath is completely clear isn't that a gorgeous turquoise I absolutely love Jacquard's turquoise so the way I ended up doing this I actually ended up letting it cool completely before I started the glazing process but you absolutely do not have to do that all you have to do is take it out while it's still hot with your tongs and then you can go straight into this next process of adding your dye to the water 
Mine was completely cool, so I used my hands and everything to take it out. So this next color is Deep Purple, and it's by Dharma. And it is diluted into a 1% stock solution. And we are going to add two tablespoons of that just to start with. And also very important if you didn't notice, this is the same dye bath we were using for our blue turquoise. So it already has a lot of acid in it. It is very acidic. So you want to make sure that you keep your water very acidic when you do this glazing process so that it doesn't have time to penetrate through to the fiber. We just want to get kind of a glaze on the outside as the name suggests. I also went ahead and added just a little bit more vinegar, probably about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. It wasn't very much. And just in those few minutes of stirring it around, I wanted to go ahead and show you it's already starting to clear. It doesn't take very long once you add acid. As long as you add enough acid to silk, it really sticks and clings to that fiber really fast. And also, as you can see, I'm handling the fiber, so my heat is off. It's still a little warm, but I'm able to handle it, and I don't need the heat for it to already start setting. Heat is not as important as with wool. You really need heat with wool, but not so much with silk. So as you can see, this dye bath is almost completely cleared. So I decided to go ahead and add a little bit more purple to get it where I wanted it at. So this first color is actually Purple by Jacquard. And I went ahead and added one tablespoon of that. It is more of a red toned purple, so it's going to add even more dimension. Deep Purple by Dharma is a little bit darker. And I added another half of a tablespoon of Deep Purple. So one tablespoon of Purple by Jacquard and then a half a tablespoon of Deep Purple by Dharma. So I stirred that around and I went ahead and put my heat on medium and left it to sit with the lid on. All right, let's check out where we're at. Really hot, so I'm gonna cut that heat down all the way off. Yeah, it's starting to clear beautifully. So I went ahead and gently flipped it over I covered it with the lid and left it completely off the heat and just let it cool like that. So it's been sitting for about two hours now and it is pretty much completely cooled for the most part and our dye water is almost completely exhausted. It's just a little tinge of blue. So what we're going to do now is take it and just lay it in the basin with its dye water and let it completely finish cooling and absorbing all of the rest of the dye. So I'm going to let you look at this eye candy and watch me unravel the braid in the next clip and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a life update and where I've been and what's been going on with me for pretty much the past month and a half. So a lot of you have been a little worried about me and my health and everything. Don't worry, I'm going good now. So for about the past month and a half I have been experiencing the worst morning sickness I've ever had in my life. And yes, if you know what that means, I'm expecting. I'm pregnant currently, and we're really excited and a little nervous, but that's just how pregnancies go. My question to you guys is if you would like to see some special baby related content or maybe a gender reveal, I am going to find out the gender before the birth and I'm really excited. This is going to be our last baby so it is really really bittersweet and special so just let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in or I can completely leave it off the channel and it's totally up to you guys just let me know. And I would also like to know if you guys are interested in knitting and crochet tutorials. I can also knit and crochet really well. I can make my own patterns with both of the crafts. And it might not always be with hand spun yarn. It could be with like acrylic or just wool. Something hypoallergenic for a baby, of course. So let me know if that's something you might want to see. Some crochet and knitting tutorials. Or how to adjust a pattern in a knitting pattern or crochet pattern or something like that. Let me know if that's something you're interested in as well. So anyways, I was really, really happy with how this turned out. It turned out way better than I thought it would. I did have to wash it twice, and with silks a lot of the times, for me at least, I have really hard water, so it can leave a little bit of a tinge in the water. And if it is really bad for you, if it's really bleeding bad, if it's more than a tinge, you can cold soak it with vinegar and water, and usually that'll completely set it so I continue to rinse it a few more times off camera and I want you to take a look at this technique here. I love to do this with silks. You take your 
pointer finger and your middle finger and you run the fiber through your fingers and get the excess water off that way and that'll flatten it and also kind of you know pull the water off of it and then you can hang it up to dry like that while it's flattened and that will keep your silk really really pretty after it is dry instead of being kind of mangled and tangled sometimes it can just get all out of whack with silk especially mulberry I was so so proud of this braid and I'm definitely going to be scaling it up. I would love to dye a whole pound of silk this color. It's that beautiful to me. This camera doesn't do it justice. I tried to get the lighting right like multiple, multiple tries and this is the best I could do. So I hope that it kind of shows through a little bit. The purple, it has a really hard time picking up the dimension of that purple. The purple is so much more striking with your eye. And as you can see, that glazing technique worked flawlessly. Adding your acid to the water before will always stop that penetration and just kind of glaze it on the outside of the fiber. And it works really, really well with silk. So look at this sparkle. This is with the flash on. So you can see all the little sparkles of mulberry silk. That is just something you don't get in any other fiber. It's only with silks. And mulberry in particular has the most shine of any fiber that I've personally seen. Now there's a lot of other fiber out there, but mulberry silk is one of my favorites. It's really, it's a little hard to work with, but it is totally worth it. It just puts a special sparkle in your finished yarn that you just can't get with any other fiber in my opinion. If you're looking about how to spin mulberry silk, I have a video on that already. I will link it up in the eye for you. And I also have a playlist I will try to link in the description box or here at the end of the video. And it is on dyeing silks in particular. So you can check those out if you're interested. I will probably have this one listed in Etsy within the next week or so. So keep an eye out for that if you would like this particular braid. And I have to say thank you to all of you that keep watching my channel, even though I was away, and all of my friends on here that I've made. You guys mean so much to me. And thank you all to the ones that personally reached out to me and were checking up on me to make sure I was okay and everything. It meant so, so much to me. And I really appreciate it. I love you all so, so much. And to all my subscribers, I'm so excited for the future of this channel and where it could go and I hope you all have a wonderful, amazing day. Stay safe and stay healthy and stay happy. And I love you all very much, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.